books are really expensive. <laughs> We all know that I tend to buy a lot of books every single month and my book budget every single month is uh, unlimited. Basically, I spend a lot of money and I don't really count myself, which is a uh, bad financial means. But it does not also mean that I buy every single book on my wish list. And that's because I tend to buy a lot of books, but it's the quantity of it that makes it seem like I'm spending a lot of money when in reality I'm buying books usually at large discounts or when they have magnificent sales so the following books are books that i never bought because of the price and they're a little too expensive for me and also because they're authors they're from authors that i haven't read before maybe they're debut authors or maybe they're just books that i've seen a lot on instagram but i haven't heard many things about it and i don't actually know what it's about and that's why i'm not willing to put you know 25 to 30 dollars on these brand new hardcover editions the following are titles of books that i want to keep track of personally and books that have kept me interested and then maybe in the future when I have you know some spare dollars to spend I can buy them myself and maybe treat myself so the first book that I haven't pre-ordered yet or haven't bought yet is actually coming out in December 2019 this year and it's called would like to meet by Rachel Winters and this book I never heard much about this mostly because Berkeley Romance didn't start blasting this on Instagram yet and I so far no arcs have been distributed and not many people know about it except for the fact that it's been updated on Goodreads and if you're a hardcore buyer or book blogger you'll notice that there's a listing for it on Amazon that's where I found out about this book but basically what like to meet is about this girl named Evie and she needs this um, film screenplay writer to write the next romantic comedy and he's I guess our main love interest for the guy character and she is obviously our main female love interest and he is reluctant to write this screenplay simply because he doesn't believe in romance he doesn't believe in romantic comedy and then she herself she doesn't believe in this stuff too but she also has her job on the line she needs to build her career and she just needs to get it done so she starts doing all these little things like she sets up meet cute that's up coffee shop dates she sets up all these like little things that kind of line up that make Make him feel more interested and inspired in romance and this book looks super cute and I think it's like gonna be one of those titles that everybody's going to be talking about on Instagram sometime in the near future in the next couple of months and I am dying to read it so if there are arcs you bet I'll be requesting it or if there are finished copies and they're on sale either in my bookstores or maybe in my thrift shops I'm definitely buying this copy. The book I want to talk about is How Not to Die Alone by Richard Roper and this book I've seen everywhere on Instagram so if you guys know of this book and if you guys read it please tell me if it's worth my money. Um, basically this book is about Andrew and Andrew works for a public health company and he hates his job or at least he feels very indifferent to his job he's just stuck he can't move up and like there's really no reason for him to move down and he's been working in this dead-end job for a very long time and then one day he meets this girl and her name is called Peggy and he gets caught in this white lie that kind of just has a snowball effect and it just keeps growing bigger and bigger and bigger and he knows that if he tells Peggy the truth he might lose Peggy forever so then now he doesn't know what to do and this book sounds so adorable and so cute and I know that if it's about a character who is similar to Ellie or Ophelia is completely fine which is the book that it's constantly being compared to I know that there's going to be also a lot of character development and a lot of hardships that the characters are gonna go through so I'm excited and I can't wait to read it this book that I would love to own is The Flat Chair by Beth O'Leary and this book has absolutely blown up on Instagram and everybody has read it and everybody praised it but if only I could buy it but I can't because my wallet would absolutely hate me and anyways so this book is about Tiffany and Leon so they never met but they also share the same flat and they pay each other the flat so that they can rent out the whole apartment but basically it's one bed I believe and then Tiffany sleeps there at night while Leon works 
at his job at night and then when Tiffany needs to go to work in the day Leon goes back into the flat and sleeps during the day so it's kind of like they never met but they share the same living space which is kind of weird to think about because if you were thinking that someone was sleeping in your bed while you weren't there I would be kind of grossed out because like I don't want to share a bed with people like beds are very personal spaces like we do a lot of things in our beds you know I personally like to watch movies and eat my snacks in my bed so I don't want some guy doing the same thing because like what if they like make my bed messy you know so anyways so this book I believe there are a lot of trigger warnings as well book it deals with a lot of abusive ex-boyfriends or stalkerish ex-boyfriends that are really creepy and I know that for a fact that this book is not just like romance it has a lot of triggering elements it's a lot of deeper issues and it explores a lot more character development elements to it so I'm excited to read it last book that I would totally buy if I just threw caution to the wind and just spent all my money on things um, is Kissing Galileo by Penny Reed. And this book is actually an ebook and on Amazon currently it's listed at $6.99 and that's just way too expensive for my personal preferences, um, especially for an ebook, like $7. I don't even spend $7 on my cup of coffee, nor do I spend $7 on my lunch. So why would I spend $7 on a book is like kind of like what I'm thinking about. But basically, Basically, this book is the second book in her Dear Professor series and I actually read the first book called Kissing Toy Story. Okay, so I can't say that name so please do not judge me. I can't read. But anyway, so I read that book and that book was like cheap. So that's why I kind of like purchased that book when it was cheap and then I loved it. Like read it in one sitting, completely captivated by Penny Reed's writing because I think it was also my first Penny Reed book and I was just like, God, this is why she's famous like this is why so many people buy her books and then when the second book came out I was like oh god I really really want to get it but then again you know $6.99 I don't know how to justify that so I still never bought it and I still never read it and the synopsis is basically about another professor and I guess another student or colleague and he's a research professor and then for some reason or some weird circumstance he sees her completely naked and then they kind of like develop and flourish a relationship like that but um, the synopsis actually doesn't really tell me much on Amazon, so we don't know. But my friends, I think my friends read it because they're dedicated hardcore Penny Reed fans and they loved it. So um, maybe one day I will purchase it. Maybe if they have like an awesome sale, I can buy it like that. Um, also Penny Reed's uh, series, the Neanderthal series, like they're all on Kindle Unlimited now and I have Kindle Unlimited. So like I'm like you know, thinking about reading it. Although each book I think is around 400 to 500 pages and that's just like a lot of reading for me. Like a completely a lot of reading. Although like I read like, I can finish two books a day, 500 pages of one single story with the same set of characters might be just too much for my small brain and my two brain cells. You know that is it for this video I know I only have like four books on my wish list and it's mostly because I have a very short-term memory and I don't keep track of books that I want to purchase on my Goodreads or anywhere else so that's why it's probably really short and um, I just want to keep it short and simple anyways for this video uh, sorry about the camera angle I know it looks a little crooked and it is crooked it's mostly because I have a shitty tripod and it's balanced on a box right Right now and it's just like a complete mess but what did you expect from subscribing to this channel it's me like I am a mess if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe down below give me a thumbs up and leave your comments because I read them and it's cute and it's cool but it, you can always slide into my Instagram DMs as well because I feel like a lot more people are more interactive with me there anyways so yay and also like follow on all my social media channels down below in my bio I always leave them there you can be friends with me on Goodreads I've noticed that after I started making a lot of YouTube videos I've started to get more requests to be my friends or a lot more people following my reviews on Goodreads which always like makes me happy because I always am active on my Goodreads I always make sure to shelve all the books that I read and to shelve all the books that I want to um, keep my eye out on and things like that although that totally contradicts to what I said earlier but yeah and anyways so I'll see you guys next time bye